This is KMAX Technology Tuesday, sponsored by Blue Layer Innovative Technology Solutions. If you're not prepared, it's time to get prepared. It's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so we got to bring in our expert, Michael Strong from Blue Layer IT. Good to see you again. Good to see you. You know, we, we've listened to your advice in the past, and we change our passwords now from time to time, right. and, and, and we, you know, have made sure we updated our accounts with our antivirus company, whoever that may be. Are, are we safe still these days if we do that? Boy, I mean, good question. I like to tell people, you know, there's you really could not do enough, right? Mm. Between better passwords and two-factor authentication, antivirus right now is so basic. You really want to get into things like endpoint detection and response, way mm. more advanced than just traditional antivirus. And it's all about layering these things together. But wow, I mean, there's so many threats out there, so many breaches, things of that nature. You really need to have a layered approach. You mentioned the two-factor authentication. Look. Yeah. I, I, I know you said we need it, but I just, I get tired of typing in the code that they text me every time we do that kind of thing. Isn't there a better way? You know, the, the thing I tell people is you, you probably have two-factor authentication on your bank, mm -hmm. right? You're protecting your money. Passwords, corporate passwords, the things you do at work, the things you do at home, those passwords are gateways to really critical information. So if you're willing to do it for your bank, I get it, it's annoying, you know, it's there, it's, you always gotta log in every day, it seems. But the point is to send a threat actor to somebody else who's not doing those things, who's an easier target. So if you minimize your footprint, maybe they'll pass you up and focus on the next guy. Facebook just announced a, a data breach. Uh, Apple's, of course, had some problems. We, we've gone over, uh, we're, a lot of us are gonna start our Christmas shopping and do a lot of that online here. Right. Do, do we just question everything that we see now? Do we just have to? Yeah, I mean, of course, if it sounds too good to be true, right, it's, it's probably too good to be true. So, you know, there's not a Nigerian prince that sent me millions of dollars. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll find one. But, right. you know, when you look at those emails and those scams, and you're, you're not going to get, you know, six free iPads this Christmas, right? So mouse over those links. Look at who sent you the email. Look for misspellings and typos and words and phrases that don't sound correct. You know, those are the things that should stand out. Just be a better human firewall for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Carry that out through the rest of this year and next year, and you'll be better off for it. Uh, let me add this, too. You know, most of us will just delete those when we see them. Yeah. Should we take the time to try to report those things to somebody? So in a business setting, if you have an email filtering platform, the best course of action is to block those in your email filtering platform. Okay. Oftentimes when you unsubscribe, the sketchy folks just now know you're really there and they'll continue to spam you at that point mm -hmm. or spread the fact that you are a legitimate user. If you can block it without unsubscribing, that's my advice. For businesses, we're hearing more and more about cybersecurity insurance that right. you, can, you can buy uh, to sort of keep you covered if there's a ransomware problem, a data breach, something like that. Is something like that worth it? 100%. It's absolutely worth it. Okay. You know, the thing about cybersecurity insurance is the bar continues to move higher and higher. So it is a really good benchmark for businesses to raise their bar to make sure that they have those things to best protect their business. And if and when there is an incident from a threat actor, those circumstances can get incredibly expensive. Whether it's incident response, it's attorneys, you know, it's notifications and all the things pile up and you want insurance to have your back. And it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Before we go, you know, we update our phone software and, and, and we, we take care of our insurance or whatever we need there. What about things like routers or VPN that I've had in my office for a while? Do I need to update those and think about that? Absolutely. I mean, if you have a Nest thermostat, even that gets updates. Wow. Your smart TV gets updates. Mm -hmm. So if there's an opportunity to update it, and the time is right, and you understand how to back out of an update, perhaps, if it breaks things in your home, I'm all for it. Do the updates, call a friend, you know, get those updates done. They're there for a reason. Most of the time, it's new features. The rest of the time, it's to plug some sort of security gap. Keeping you and the business safe, Michael Strong with Blue Layer IT. Good to see you again, my friend. You too. Thanks. Great tips. Thank you.